Game Ranks presents the top 10 new strategy games of 2016. This list includes both turn-based and real-time strategy games, so just if you like planning and strategizing, and I know that's not a word, whatever, but let's get started off with number 10. Battlefleet Gothic Armada is an RTS game adaptation of a classic tabletop game. This is running in Unreal Engine 4 and it looks Pretty gorgeous, crazy good, and detailed, and that's for good reason, because you manage every single ship in your fleet. It gets pretty massive. It has a lengthy single player game with tons of battles and space exploration, as well as PvP multiplayer. And at number 9 we have Endless Space 2. This is a turn-based strategy game that's a sequel to the quiet cult hit Endless Space. This game focuses on space colonization in the future, although there's not really too much information about this game yet. But basically, if you love looking at maps of the galaxy and space charts and moons, and managing resources and plotting courses, this game is for you. And at number 8 we have Frozen Synapse 2. This is another game on our list that we don't have too much info for, but the game looks to release in 2016 for PC, Mac, and Linux. Like the original, it'll be a turn-based tactics game with a campaign made of a bunch of different scenarios and multiplayer. The difference is, is that the new one, according to their marketing, aims to have more open-world tactics. So it seems like strategy games aren't safe from the growing trend of open-world game design. But the original Frozen Synapse was pretty dope, so we're hoping this one is too. And at number 7 we have Darkest Dungeon. This is a turn-based game, albeit an RPG, but it has tons of strategy elements. The whole concept of the game is considering a lot of strategy because the game is so immensely difficult and challenging. You crawl through various dungeons and fight in turn-based combat with a group of characters that you recruit and train yourself. The thing is, is that these characters are basically like real people. They all have problems. You have to deal with their issues of fear, insanity, alcoholism, disease, and a bunch of other factors. These are all very important important variables and all of them affect gameplay. People have been loving this game, it's incredibly unique, it's got a really cool art style, and like I said, it's very challenging. Strategy fans can meet up with RPG fans and have a big old party with Darkest Dungeon. And at number 6 we have Homeworld, Deserts of Karak. This is a ground-based RTS serving as a prequel to the original and much beloved Homeworld game. Granted that one took place completely in space, but thankfully judging by fan responses, this game is still pretty good despite switching to a desert aesthetic. You assemble ground fleets and do battle in a bunch of big old deserts. It actually gets pretty intense with huge environments and some pretty big scenarios. You're in charge of commanding all different types of unit from small infantry and tanks and stuff to giant sand crawling crafts. There's a 13 mission campaign that may seem a bit short for some RTS players, but there's also multiplayer with a bunch of different game modes and ranked match options. If you've ever played the original Homeworld and loved it, it's worth it even just to check this out. It might be worth your time. And at number 5 we have Master of Orion. This is the new game from the classic game series that defined the 4X genre. This new version of Master of Orion adds more production values, voice acting, a big fleshed out world, and the game is really big with 75 researchable technological advances, 100 different solar systems, customizable ships, and just a lot more stuff. Despite that, the response so far, especially on Steam, uh, people are a bit mixed and they don't think it's deep enough. Some of the systems seem kind of bland, but overall it's just the fact that it's a new Master of Orion and it's beefed up, people are still kind of excited about it. Then at number 4 we have Total War Warhammer. This is the latest Total War game from Creative Assembly, this time using the classic Warhammer license, not the 40k one. I personally like the 40k one better, but uh, that's for another video. This is the 10th Total War game and the first in a planned Warhammer trilogy. The game is going to feature 4 playable factions at launch, which are the Empire, the Greenskins, the Dwarfs, and the Vampire Counts. So basically what this is, is a Total War game in the Warhammer style. That's pretty cool, right? The Total War games are awesome, and if you're a fan of Warhammer, this shit might be right up your alley. And at number 3 we have Ashes of the Singularity. So in this game, planet by planet, there's this big old war raging across the galaxy. The technological singularity has given humanity the power to expand further than they've ever had before. Now they compete with each other and they're sentient artificial intelligence adversaries for control of newfound worlds. I don't really know what any of that means, I was just reading the description of the game. Though what this game actually is, it's been compared to an amped up version of StarCraft, which I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty great. The game is currently in early access and so far the reception seems pretty good. The game touts a powerful AI engine that can create complex strategies and plays by the same rules that you do that makes this game a really challenging RTS. Not only that, but there is competitive and cooperative multiplayer. There's actually a lot to this game. While it may not look too hot, there is a good level of depth here. It plays really well, feels pretty old school, and generally people are really enjoying it. And at number 2 we have Duelist. Duelist is labeled as a competitive strategy game focused on technical 
combat, squad building, and ranked ladder play. This game is based on one versus one play, with players playing cards to cast spells, use artifacts, summon minions, and stuff like that. Basically what it is, it's a lot like a digital card game like Hearthstone. There are six different factions to play as, each with their own unique minions and positioning capabilities. You can also build your own custom squad or deck in other words from over 300 different battle units, spells, and artifacts. So if you've ever wanted a competitive multiplayer tactical turn-based game in the form of digital cards, maybe this is going to be up your alley. And at number one, we have XCOM 2. We made a before you buy on this game, and although it had some initial problems at launch, it's a damn good turn-based tactical game. Obviously, the XCOM series is renowned to be totally awesome, humans versus aliens, and XCOM 2 really ramps it up with beautiful, although sometimes poorly optimized graphics, some cool new player enemy designs, and a loot system that actually feels pretty rewarding. Not to mention the fact that you're going out on these missions and doing these battles, but you're also building up your home base. XCOM 2 is an incredibly challenging, but really rewarding strategy game. It's awesome, and it gets really intense, and you really care about every single soldier that you raise from the ground up. You care about every single one of your units, and when they die, it's a big deal. You feel that impact. And that's not translated through story or cutscenes, it's just gameplay. And I think that's a testament to how good the XCOM gameplay really is. So if you like strategy, you like turn-based stuff, and you like shooting aliens, check out XCOM 2. We also got some bonus strategy games on our list, including The Guild 3, Overland, Mugenics, Spell Force 3, Total War Arena, and Starfall Tactics. Guys, these are the best new strategy games worth playing in 2016. We put them in a list for you guys to check them out. Most importantly though, we wanna hear in the comments what strategy games you guys are playing in 2016. Did we miss any? Let's talk about them down in the comments below. Of course, if you had a great time with this video, clicking the like button helps us out and lets us do more strategy-based videos. And if this is your first time here, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.